Welcome to episode five. In episode four, we were talking about guitar amps, and today I brought out a keyboard. And I also have a brand new oscilloscope here. It is a 12-bit scope, beautiful screen, beautiful scope, terrible waveform. What is that? All right, well, see, I've got a microphone hooked up to this thing, and we're going to talk into it, and, well, that's kind of what I expect, but that's not usable. So we're going to fix that today. We'll figure out what's going on, and then we'll fix it. What it should look like is this. Uh, e. So, how do we go from this really terrible waveform on the left to the kind of waveform that we're looking for on the right? Well, there's a hint in this slide. Uh, there's a low-pass filter that we put in. And here you can see it. It says filter in use, pointing to this guy. It's stuck between the probe, or in this case, it's just a wire that clips onto the microphone lead, and the oscilloscope. And it's low pass, so it blocks the high frequencies and lets the lower audio frequencies through. And I'll show you how you can make one of these yourself. But first, let's talk more about the problem so we know really how to fix it. Here we're looking at the microphone signal without the filter, and we can see the noise. It's quite big. It's, it's 30 millivolts peak to peak in amplitude on this screen. Meanwhile, the signal we're trying to look at, the audio waveform out of the microphone, is only a few millivolts peak to peak in amplitude, typically. So what is this noise? And how's it getting in? Well, as we'll see, it's radio frequency noise. And it's concentrated well above the audio spectrum. Here I'm sweeping from 0 to 20 megahertz. This is the FFT in the oscilloscope looking at the spectral content of this time domain waveform. And how is that noise getting in to the signal that's supposed to be coming from the microphone? Well, the microphone itself, in this case, is the condenser mic. And it's in a metal housing. It's pretty well shielded. And the cable is shielded. But right here, where I've hooked up a probe, in this case just some clip leads, I dutifully did a twisted pair here to try to keep down noise, but there is some pickup in this area. But there's also pickup in the microphone itself. And especially in a dynamic mic, you may find that. And at radio frequencies emitted from things like power supplies, uh, LED lights, etc., those radio frequency signals can get into just about anything. So, who's making all this noise? Well, a primary source in today's world are the switch mode power supplies that are everywhere in your house, in your buildings, etc. Here's one in a television. Also, we now have LED lights and we have high efficiency fluorescent lights in things like office buildings and those will emit significant radio frequency noise. And finally, radio transmitters themselves, such as this 7.5 kilowatt transmitter that is an FM station about a mile and a half from my house. So let's look at the spectrum and the signal more carefully to understand what we're seeing and why this noise doesn't typically impact audio equipment that you may have. Well, the answer is right here. It's radio frequency noise. It's much higher in frequency than audio signals, which are concentrated in the 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz range, as you know. And this is bad because it allows it to couple in more easily than the traditional hum or something like that that you may be familiar with. But it's also good because it allows us to filter it out. So here's a close-up inspection of that noise. This is the waveform view on the left set to a scale of about 20 microseconds per division. You can see the vertical scales from minus 15 millivolts to plus 15 millivolts. So this noise we're talking about, to be clear, is not something you're probably going to have to mess with when you're troubleshooting digital equipment, which has 3 volt signals or 5 volt signals. But it totally destroyed my ability to look at the microphone directly. 
Now on this horizontal scale, the noise is very high frequency, so you don't see any sine waves here. We'll zoom in in a minute. You do see some impulsive noise, probably from the switchers. And in the spectrum on the right-hand side, which I turned on the FFT in the oscilloscope so I could see what it looked like in the frequency domain, this is from 0 to 20 megahertz. And we can see a large concentration here around 12, 13 megahertz. But it's everywhere. It's very broadband noise. So on the right-hand side of this screen, I've run the time base out from 20 microseconds per division on the left to Let's look at this top one. It's 200 nanoseconds per division. This is a zoom in on one of these spikes. And we can see there's a somewhat sinusoidal waveform, but it's kind of noisy and not perfect, period. And that's probably what accounts for this concentration around 10, 11, 12, 13 megahertz. In fact, uh, each cycle here is about 100 nanoseconds long. So that correlates. Where's this coming from? Well, I suspect it's some ring down from switching waveforms within one of these switch mode power supplies. And to be clear, there are many of these switch mode power supplies in the house. Here we're just zoomed in on the noise caused by one of them, but you can see all these different spikes of different amplitudes and different periods. Periods are typically on the order of 20 microseconds, as you can see here. That's because the switchers run at 40, 50 kilohertz or so. But when they switch, they ring, and that emits noise at higher frequencies. Finally, in this examination, you can see some much higher frequency content here. Zooming in on that, on a 50 nanosecond per division scale, we can compute that it's probably around 100 megahertz, and in fact that's what it is. It is, in fact, from these, this FM radio station, but there are others as well. There are several stations in any given area. And so for fun, I set the FFT to sweep from 80 megahertz to 120 megahertz, and you can see all those radio stations. So the solution is simple and clear. This is radio frequency noise, and audio only extends up to 20 kilohertz or so. So let's filter it out. Just add a simple low-pass filter. Why isn't that available commercially? Why isn't that part of the probe, for example, a switched-in low-pass filter? Or why isn't built into the scope? Now, I did look, and there is a 20 megahertz low-pass filter in this scope, like in many others, but that's not good enough to solve this problem created by these switch mode power supplies. There needs to be a lower frequency filter for when you're dealing with low frequency signals. And it's not hard. The input impedance of most general purpose 100 megahertz scopes is one megohm in parallel with something, usually 15 picofarads, sometimes a little higher. It doesn't really matter. So I was sitting on my couch and it thought about this and I thought, hey, the easiest thing to do here is to stick something like a 100 k ohm resistor in series, in line with the signal coming into the scope. Because look, it creates a low-pass filter, an RC filter. And I picked 100K in this case because I didn't want to mess up the sensitivity of the scope. This is a 1 meg ohm load over here, so 100K is going to cut it down uh, by about 10%. So the amplitudes would be a little bit off, but I just want to see if it would work. This is the first attempt. And I built it up on a little breadboard here using some parts I already had, and sure enough, it worked. The resistor I use is 110K, and that gives me about 100 kilohertz low-pass filter, a little higher frequency. It doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to let the audio signals go through and block the major noise at the higher frequencies. After verifying that that simple solution worked, I did web searches, and I could not find any simple low-pass filters. I did find one. I think it was from, from a company called Thor Labs. Uh, they wanted like 70, 80 bucks for it. And I wasn't sure it would work for what I wanted. So I made my own. This is the refined solution. I purchased this for under $15. This is a 50 ohm load. You may have one of these for your scope. But I just wanted the case. And so I got it and pried it open. And wow, it was a nice little circuit board in it. 
And what I built inside was a 10K ohm resistor that decreases the voltage division with the 1 meg input impedance down to about a 1% loss. And a, I put a 100 picofarad capacitor here. So I went from this to a 10K resistor and I added 100 picofarads here to ground. And it's now in this nice little shielded case. Awesome. And I tried it both with 1X and with 10X probes. I, I did find that with the 10X probe, I needed to mess with the compensation cap on the probe to get the step response and the frequency response correct. But it did work. But with 1X, it's just beautiful. Here's the vowel sound E, 3 millivolts in amplitude. And then I looked at the audio spectrum, and this is what I was really after. The vowel sound E has a fundamental down here in the couple hundred hertz region, um, and it looks like there's a second harmonic. You can even see that in the waveform. You can see the higher frequencies, but the spectrum brings out more information on that. They're around two and a half, three kilohertz, that range. And this is what allows your ear and brain to distinguish E from O and various other vowel sounds. And I was interested in that material. But mainly I was interested in using a microphone with my fancy new oscilloscope. And it works. So if you're interested in getting one of these housings and trying this yourself, this is what I found on Amazon. You can also get these from AliExpress and other places. Uh, this vendor had it for $11.34. Oh yeah, got to have a resistor and capacitor. If you have a stock, that's free. Uh, in quantity, that would be like adding two cents to this. So in conclusion, this works amazingly well. In fact, now some scopes have built-in DSP filters and you can switch in a low-pass filter. But this works a lot better than that. With the scope I have, that was way too slow. Uh, it just didn't work at all. And I now have the ability with my scope to just hook up to a microphone, as I should, uh, without needing an audio preamp or anything like that. My scope has 12 bits. Let's make use of them. And while I did this for audio, it could be useful for other low-frequency, low-level signal probing. Anything where you don't want to go above 100 kilohertz, a couple hundred kilohertz or so. And anything where the amplitudes you're dealing with are in the millivolt range. Again, if you're doing digital design, you, you don't care about this because you've got three 5-volt signals. You're not going to see this noise most likely. You may see other noise, but it may not be caused by this or solved by this. Here's the big question. Why isn't this commercially available? This makes no sense. If anybody knows of an inline low-pass audio filter that you can use with your scope, please leave it in the comments below. I'm, I'm curious. I, I did quite a bit of searching and could not find anything. This ought to be available if somebody wants to, you know, build this and market it. It's good with me. Indeed, probe manufacturers could add this. They could have a little switch that says, you know, audio frequency response or something, and you could switch that in, just like you can do a 1X or 10X switch. Or they could offer special audio probes. And as I said, this is especially valuable with the newer 12-bit scopes that are coming out on the market. So that's it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope this is useful to someone. And I'll leave you with this parting shot of another vowel sound. I won't tell you which vowel sound it is, but this is the frequency response of it. Which vowel sound is this?